obviously with what I found out yesterday, there's a renewed sense of urgency <laughs> within me about getting this thing going. I, I just showed up today to see if there was anything I could assist with, but it looks like they've kind of got the whole area cleared, at least all the trees that you know I can kind of manage easily on my own are already cleared. And there's no one here, which, you know, set the hairs on the back of my neck up a little bit like, oh, you know, crap, do they know, you know? But I don't think so. I mean, that was just a very, just a very minor thing. I think I still got a lot of time before the general population is aware of what's going on, what's coming. And, uh, you know, I'm not that worried, but it does remind me about the enormous amount of support uh, that you get from an active functioning society around you. I think a lot of people don't appreciate that. In our normal lives, you know, you get irritated by people, you know, there's traffic or whatever, but having a vibrant functioning society around you gives you so many supports, uh, you know, for doing all sorts of things. If these guys did, uh, you know, you know, find out about everything and, you know, they're just gonna focus on their own situation now, you know, they care less about this, uh, well, one, they, they would not have left their excavator here. I <laughs> think they left their excavator here, so they're coming back. But, um, but if they did, uh, you know, come to that conclusion and I was on my own, I would really be screwed at this point because, you know, the rest of this, it's a lot of work for one person to do on their own. So having the, the asset of having a functioning society is something that I'm appreciating right now and I'm really hoping that I can scrape by and have it hold together until I get, you know, at least what I need you know, from other people. And once it, just the lumber's here and everything, I can be autonomous, I can do it on my own. But, uh, you know, there's certain things I can't do on my own. Uh, and to make sure that this stuff all goes through, I'm trying to make sure I have everything ready and, uh, you know, all the questions answered for them when they are putting this thing up. When you're putting up the foundation, you have to dig the trench around, they have to go down, you know, below the frost line, and you have to know exactly where you're going to have anything pass through the foundation. Obviously, things like sewage, you know, going out to a septic system, you need to have a pass through there, you know, uh, you know oftentimes for electrical, you know, wiring, you have to have a pass through for that kind of thing. But for this house, I also have other things like gray water uh, pass throughs, you know, where, where is my gray water going to be going out? Uh, now, I'm doing that kind of under the radar at this point, but I do want to put the pass throughs uh, you know, there so they're ready for me for later when I do the modification. And also, in particular, last night I was thinking about the pass through for my wood stove. Uh, I've been, do, you know, doing primarily wood heat for the past decade and a half. I've got a decent amount of experience with it. And while I know there's a little bit of I don't, controversy about this, I think outside air is absolutely the way to go if you're putting in a wood stove because instead of you using your warm inside air for the combustion chamber in the in the wood stove and having that. I'll go up the chimney, you're using cold outside air that's already cold anyway. Now, I know some people say it's like, well, the fire burns better if it's warm air. I know, I've been doing this for a decade and a half. The fire burns just fine. And it's great because if you're drawing from your inside environment, that air has to be made up from somewhere and it gets sucked in from all the cracks around the windows and doors and everything like that. And you get, you're having cold drafts come into your house. If you have an outside air adapter, then you're, you don't have any of that and you get to keep all your nice warm air. You don't have all those drafts and everything, but it's tricky because that air coming in is super cold. You know, if it's super cold outside and usually in the winter when you're <laughs> running a fire, it's probably cold. So you, you have to have that come through in an area where it's not going to cause frost issues with your foundation. It can't go underneath the footing of the foundation. Uh, it has to, you know, kind of stay away from any of that kind of stuff. And I, I, I was kind of racking my brain ex last night about exactly how that's going to come in, where it's going to snake, because you obviously don't want this really long run because, you know, even though I'm going to insulate that tube, you know, it's still, it's, it's a cold tube running through your house. You want to minimize its length. So I was thinking about that, but my main concern here is just having air, all the questions answered. So when these guys show up and they're ready to pour, you know, if it can be warm enough to do so, because it has to be warm enough, that there are no holds up. There are no holdups from my end. So I'm trying to figure out all that stuff. But uh, so far, so good. A lot of sky. That's a lot of warmth that's going to come in. That's a lot of solar energy that's going to come in. Overall, I'm happy. I'm excited. I'm a little nervous. But it's moving forward. And uh, fingers crossed. That's it. Thanks for watching.